Hey everybody, it is day two of the 25K PLO. Uh, it's like 11, 15 a.m. I woke up at nine-ish uh, after five and a half, six hours of sleep. Uh, it, it always takes me a while to wind down after playing you know, 12 hours of WSOP action, get home at 1.30 or two, and then, I, I don't know, the adrenaline and focus and whatever else is going on in my body while I play. Yeah, I, I don't sleep for a little while. And I'll be totally fine today. It's just if you do this for four days in a row, then then I, I will not be totally fine. It'll definitely affect my play. Overall, I feel okay about the way I played yesterday. I think I didn't I didn't make many mistakes. However, I like wanted to. So I I was I was definitely feeling undisciplined. I was I was getting bored. I wanted to get involved in more pots. I wanted to increase my variance. I wanted to play bigger pots. Um, a little more than I should have. And I mostly kept that under control, but I still had the urge to enter more pots than I should have. And so I think uh, one of two keys today is to remain disciplined and try to find the satisfaction of playing the right hands pre-flop and in including folding hands that look kind of pretty that you'd love to play, but you know are not correct. Um, I need to kind of motivate myself and, and find the motivation, I guess, to to make those I mean, frankly, just pre-flop folds, I mean, flop folds a little bit uh, in spots where it's just, you know, going to be very slightly minus EV, and I can't really make up for it by outplaying my opponents out of position 40 big blinds deep <laughs> against a strong range. So that's the first key. The second key, one thing I struggle with when I play in games that are different than my usual games. So my usual game is heads up PLO, and... I get to know my opponent very well. I'm also usually playing people that have kind of similar background to me and similar study routines, or, you know, we, we've looked at the same sims and things like that. Um, so there, when I do pro like some projecting, it's not really that bad. Um, and projecting and then adjusting that projection of how I would think in their spot um, usually gets me to a good proxy for how they actually think. Uh, where I struggle with is when I play people that, you know, I have no idea what they study or how they study. I have no idea their skill level. Um, I'm assuming many in the field are not elite heads up PLO players. And so, um, while clearly the majority of the field, at least that I encountered, know what they're doing, like they're, they're good PLO players, generally speaking, I have to be very careful about projecting thought process and understanding basically like sometimes you forget how, what you know how much you've learned about different situations and uh so i think what i need to do today is think more explicitly about is this a spot where the average opponent is likely to underfold or overfold is this a spot where the average opponent is likely to underbluff or overbluff is this a spot where i believe that the players in this field are going to recognize that they have very few strong hands on this board or are they not going to recognize that and are they going to play too uh like are they going to bluff too often for example uh i think i need to have that that thought process be less automatic and more forced and conscious because i think yesterday i was making too many assumptions kind of going through the motions playing my hands and my range and and and, and not realizing or not capitalizing on opportunities where probably somebody's way under bluffing or probably somebody's way over folding. So I need, that needs to be more front of mind. So those are my two keys today. I mean, I've got, I've got enough time to comfortably work out and then get ready and, uh, and go play day two. So that's what I'm going to do. And, um, yeah, you heard it here. I'm <laughs> you heard it here. That's what I'm going to do. And I will see you in the car and hopefully have uh, a bit better of a run today than yesterday. Something to think about today for me is going in with the understanding that yes, um, PLO is my game. I've studied it a lot. I've taught it a lot. Uh, I know a lot about PLO. But we're playing 50 big blind PLO, eight-handed. There are going to be select spots where I can, in an individual hand, generate a big edge. But those spots aren't guaranteed to come up. Um, and part of a big part of my edge in this tournament, I believe, is 
when it when we get deep and when it gets late in the tournament and emotions are running high and the psychological factors that that show up in tournaments have more of an impact um that's really where i thrive and so even if i don't generate a ton of ev in the early going it's still kind of a you know still a plus ev event for me So we're on the first break. Uh, first level went really well. So I showed up three minutes late. Um, I left on time. There was just a lot of traffic for the first time in four trips here. Um, so I missed, I don't know how many, I probably was one or two hands. Um, but then I just kind of won every pot I played. They were None of, none were huge. Uh, let's think of some. All right, so I there were a couple limps in front of me. I limped the cutoff with ace, five, deuce, deuce, uh, with nut spades. Uh, we go five way to the flop of ace five three. Uh, check to me, I bet 10k into 15k. Uh, just the initial limper in early position calls. Turn is a five. Uh, there are two clubs on the flop. I don't know if I said that. Um, turn is a five. Uh, off suit. He checks. I decided to check back because I think he's got a little bit of ace x, but I blocked that. A lot of like six four. 7-6 with clubs, uh, flush draws with kings or something. So um, I don't want to make him fold the turn. And I think because he limped in early position, there's also the chance that he has a hand like, I don't know, ace-10, something-something, and then river bricks, and he decides to check-raise, uh, representing ace-ace, and I'm obviously calling off with ace-five. So uh, I check back. River is a 7 offsuit. He pots, or he bets 30 into 35, roughly. Um... And he had, I had like 110 total, I think. Um, I could have shoved, but I didn't feel like he's not gonna have a lot of 3-5 or 3-3 three, three that he plays that way. 7-5 is kind of what I'm hoping for. I lose to ace-ace, I lose to 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, I thought I had the best hand, but I thought he was never gonna call. Um, it's also a spot where it really doesn't look like you're bluffing. So I don't know, I think, um, anyways, I just call. He has uh, ace, queen, 6-4 for the straight. Um, I don't think he would have called it, but whatever. So I won that. There's another hand where um, hijack opens. I call cut off with king nine, king nine eight six double suited, hearts and spades. The flop is uh, and the big blind comes along. The flop is ten six three club club spade, and um, I he c bets eight into twenty roughly. Uh, I call with the gut shot and the backdoor flush draw. It's a nine high flush draw. Big line folds, turn is a jack of spades, giving me the flush draw and the open ender. He bets 26 into whatever, uh, you know, almost 40. I think he bet eight into 22, so 26 into 38. I call. Uh, River is a four of spades, giving me the flush. He checks, I bet 65K, he folds. Um, and then there's a hand where I open to 7K at 15-3 with Jack-9-7-4 double suited. Get, this table's a lot looser by the way. Get four callers. Flop is 7-3-3, so there's a lot of money. There's uh, like almost 40, 40K in the pot, so is that right? I think it is. 7-3-3, um, three, three, two clubs. I have Jack-high clubs. I bet uh, 7K. Maybe I got three callers. Anyways, I bet 7K. Um, next to act, or no, one, one, it was four callers. One player folds, um, next player makes it. Uh, this is Josh Arie. I've been not saying player names because sometimes I don't know their names and I don't want it to be obvious when I don't know somebody's name. But anyways, uh, he, he makes it 17K. Uh, fold, fold. I call, turn, deuce off suit. There's like 80K in the pot and 180K in stacks effective. He checks back, River's an offsuit 10, and I think this is a really interesting spot where sometimes I have the best hand, but he cold called an open, he made a small raise on the flop. I think it looks like he has a lot of over pairs, like kings and queens. Um, I don't think he has 10-10, or like he's gonna be less likely to raise 10-10, I think, and, and less likely to pre play it pre-flop. So I think he's just got like kings or queens, occasionally some miss bluffs, but I think the seven's too weak to show down, and I think it looks like I have showdown value when I bet small and call on that flop. So I think I would check a lot of draws that were unpaired 
think like the bet is like to clear up equity very often, um, or at least would be perceived that way. So I decide to pot for you know seventy something k, um, and he quickly folds. He folded fast enough that maybe I had the best hand, but I, I, I like my play. Um, I'm probably gonna miss a hand, so I'm gonna get back to break or get back from break. All right, so we were we almost had a really good level. Um, <clears throat> won a lot of small pots. My table has gotten tougher. So at the beginning it was a super loose table, and a lot of people I didn't recognize. And since then, um, some clearly stronger players who I still don't recognize came to the table. A couple I recognized from earlier in the tournament. Uh, Scott Siever got moved to the table. Uh, Stephen Chidwick got moved directly to my left. So it, it hasn't, and, and actually a friend of mine got moved to his left. So yeah, it's, it's gotten tougher, but that's okay. Uh, I played a hand against Scott. He limped early position. He's mostly been raising. This might've been his first limp. Um, I have King, King, Jack, Seven, Hearts, and Spades. In the cutoff, I raise. He limps for 6K, I make it 25K. He calls King, Queen, Deuce, two diamonds one club. He checks, I bet, 20k. He calls. Uh, turn is an offsuit ace. Uh, he checks, I bet, 60k. Um, looking to go for stacks here, so I have like 190k behind. He covers me slightly after I bet 60. Obviously, if he has jack 10, it, it's kind of just too bad. I have to, I have the redraw, like, I have the 10 for the chop, and then I have all the boat outs. He's not going to have ace-ace, ace, so if he doesn't have jack-10, I have the nuts. Um, and I think it's a board I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to rep a lot, so. I don't know, he, he's, and, and like, unblocking the ace is good, because he's going to think I'm repping ace-ace, and along with other stuff. He calls uh, River Bricks for offsuit. He checks, I shove. Um, he doesn't take too long in folds. Um, I was actually thinking during, while he was taking some time on the river, that this is a spot I probably under bluff in because it's just really hard to bluff enough. Because um, once I start, like once I raise pre, then I start betting the flop. I'm not betting the flop with a ton of like Jack Jack and 10 10 that, that don't have more stuff going on. So what you have to do there actually, I think is bluff some hands, I mean like bluff some hands like King Jack Jack, um, maybe even as strong as Ace Jack Jack or Ace 10 10 and maybe bluff some really surprising hands. So I was thinking, I need to bluff this spot more uh, if I get to the river this way. Um, I had a, a hand against Chidwick where I open early position, ace, king, ace, king, queen, three, with that hearts. He calls next to act. Um, flop is king, nine, six, with two hearts. Uh, the king and the six are hearts. I check, I'm gonna check this board a lot. Uh, he checks back. Turn is a queen offsuit. Uh, I thought about betting, but I really don't want to bet and get raised. I think he has a lot of hands that are in really bad shape. So I check. He bets 22K into about 40K. Um, I call. River is an offsuit six, pairing the board. I check. He bets 45K. And here, I kind of felt like he would have bet bigger on the turn with Jack-10, so I thought he was actually repping, like, King-Queen well, on the turn. I thought he was repping mostly King-Queen, maybe some King-6 with some other stuff going on, Queen-Queen, uh, and kind of that's all. And so, I don't know, I thought he would play a lot of Jack-Jack and 10-10 this way, a lot of missed draws, like, even just, you know, 10-9-8-7 type stuff. So, I called, he had Queen-Queen, 9-4 with hearts. So I lost that pot. I think that got me down to, I, I was probably up to like 500K and I think I'm under 400 now in like the high threes. Um, but having fun, it's like compared to yesterday, I've just had a lot of good hands pre-flop. So I've gotten to play a lot of pots. Um, and like the table earlier was limping a lot. So I got to play some mediocre hands. So I've gotten to see a lot of flops and I've had more fun. Let's see how I, how I fare uh, if and when I have to fold for a while. Uh, Cause that was my, my challenge yesterday. So, hopefully it's not too loud. Um, not hungry, so uh, this is dinner break. I just took a walk on the Strip. Uh, I'm back now at the Paris, uh, under the Eiffel Tower. Um, there was a hand at the very end of the level, last hand of the day, that I felt 
I'm trying to decide if I played it poorly or not. So I have about, well, let's, you know what, let's lead up to that first. So you have uh, the narrative. So at one point I head up to like almost 500, probably 500K, but I'd been chipped back down. I got in this pot against Stevie where I opened Jack Jack 9-7, Diamonds and Hearts, Under the Gun. He calls Under the Gun plus one. I open a 25K. He calls, everybody else folds. Um, there's 70K in the pot. And the flop is King, Jack, eight with two clubs, one spade. So uh, 70K in the pot. I have like 270 in stack at this point. Um, 280, something like uh, Yeah, something around that. Um, so this hand I usually bet. Uh, you unblock king, you do need to, like, charge some draws, etc. But I decided to check this time, which I think is good and fine. I think this part, the, the next part is very interesting. So I check, he bets 60k into 70k. Um, and with our stacks, like, if he makes a small bet, sometimes he's gonna have hands like, you know, king-queen-10, or ace-king-queen, or... I don't know. They, you know, like stuff that's like middling. But when he bets big, he's either got very little equity against me, like a gut shot that he's gonna fold, or he has a hand like, well, king king, or king jack, um, maybe king eight plus something. A lot of the time he has like ace king queen with nut clubs, or ace queen ten with clubs, something like that. A lot of king king queen ten with clubs, etc. So. I think that the, like, look, if he has kings, he has kings. I'm getting stacked, uh, usually. But not not necessarily always. So uh, what I did here is call, which is a play I think a lot of people miss. Whether it's solver approved, I don't know. I think it's a good play. Because what happens is I look a lot like ace-ace-10 or a flush draw of some kind, like uh, maybe queen-jack-10 with a flush draw, etc., so on a, br on a brick turn, he's gonna pot all of his two pair. He's gonna pot some weak-ish draws even because he thinks I'm just folding turn a lot on a, on a brick. And there are a lot of bricks out there. And then on a club or on a straightening card, I potentially save some money against King King. He's, I don't think he's gonna bluff clubs very often. Um, so I think it works out reasonably well. Uh, so I call, turn is a seven. So one straight gets there. It's King Jack eight, seven. Um, I don't think I have any leads here, so I check. And he ends up taking a full... So we have the shot clock now. Um, he took 30 seconds plus 30 seconds time bank and decided to check. Um, obviously, I'm getting it in on the turn if he bets any amount. Um, he checks the rivers and nine of clubs, bringing three clubs and the one card straight. Uh, I have a very clear check with my hand, I think, because, like, I'm not... I, my hand's too good to bluff with, essentially. I could bluff because everything got there, but I think I have enough, like... I have some weaker hands to bluff with, basically. Um, ace, ace, king with some back doors. Maybe not that many hands, actually, when everything gets there. Anyways, I check. Um, I had the best hand on the turn, so... He either improved to a straight or a flush, or I have the best hand. So, yeah, I just don't... I don't know. Decided to check. He uh, bets 100k. And I fold, I think, just too much guy. I just think he has something too often. Um, so that left me kind of short. I won a couple of smaller pots. And then um, the last hand before the break, I open under the gun, queen, queen, seven, six with spades to 25K. It's a 5K, 10K. The button calls and the big line calls. Uh, flop is nine, six, deuce, club, club, spade. And the big blind pots for 95k with, or 90k, with another like 30k behind. I have 300k, um, and the button covers. And I, I don't know if I made the right play or not. I decided to fold because I'm reasonably likely to have the best hand, but the big blind's gonna have some two pair, some sets, and, um, when I have him beat, he's gonna have, you know, 
I figure pair plus straight draw, pair plus flush draw. So we're like flipping. Sometimes I'm even behind those hands or often I'm behind those hands. And then there's the player behind me with 300K who, if he wakes up with king, king with clubs, I don't think he's folding. Uh, obviously, if he has, somehow has two pair, I don't think he's folding. So, I mean, the six, I block him having two pair. I block both of them having the six. And I just think if, if the player behind me is gone, I know that I have a clear get in with the player to my right because, you know, maybe I'm a slight, like I'm flipping or something, or maybe slightly behind in equity, but almost two to one pot odds. Anyways, I fold. The button gets it in with, with ace, 10, nine, five, which he has to. The big blind had jack, jack, seven, three, no draw. So he only had two outs against me. And I'm trying to decide if I'm being results oriented because I, I would have gotten my money in extremely good in that spot. Um, or if it was actually uh, a bad fold. And I don't know, I haven't decided. I, I've decided that it's close. I'm not really, I mean, I'm done beating myself up over it. I went on a walk. Um, uh, I wasn't, to be clear, I wasn't beating myself up too bad. But anyways, uh, those are the hands. I have 300K coming back from break. There are like 60 some players left and the average stack is 600K. So I have about half average. And we're halfway to the money. Um, so yeah, we need to spin it up a little bit. I'm gonna have 20 some big blinds. So I just had 30 big blinds. They're going up to 612, so 25 big blinds, which is not very much, but you know, anything can happen. So I did decide to have dinner. I'm having sparkling water, treating myself. Um, I ate so much last night that I'm really still not hungry. I think it'll be good for my focus in the last four levels. Um, not the water, just the, <laughs> the fasting. I wouldn't starve myself if I was hungry, but I mean, I ate enough for three days last night, so I'm good. Um, see you after. All right, just got back in the car. Um, I had about, after dinner break, I had like 300K. It was actually 270K, I thought I had 300. Um, chipped up to 400K um, with some small pots. And played this pot where, I don't know if I like, it might've been a mistake. So th really throughout the day, I feel like he only had a couple of hands that I that I wish I could take back or I'm not sure. And actually none that I think were a big mistake that I clearly want to take back. Just a couple that were, I'm unsure of. This one is like, I'm still a little bit unsure, to be honest, but I think it's bad. Um, and, and like, I obviously care about my result in the tournament, but whatever my result in the tournament, I'm fine and happy if I play well. So this hand, um, blinds are 6k, 12k. Middle position opens to 30k. Button calls. No, cutoff calls. I'm in the small blind with jack, jack, 10, 9 with hearts. I call. Big blind folds. Uh, so we have like 114 in the pot. Um, flop is king, 7, 7, club, club, heart. I have backdoor hearts. I believe I have one club. Check. Preflop raiser bets 30K. Fold. Um, I don't know if this is a call or a fold, but I, I decided to raise, actually. Um, I'm not going to bluff this flop at my stack depth with king x. I'm just going to check call. So I need some bluffs. And I felt like he was not very strong. Um, I just felt like that. I haven't played with him that long, played with him a few hours, but I just didn't think he was that strong. So I raised to 80. It's also just a nice spot where sometimes I have the best hand, I just take it down. Um, sometimes he has like King Jack 10 and he just folds. Um, sometimes he has aces, he just folds. Um, and then sometimes I, I realize my backdoor draw, like backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw on my two overfull outs. Um, he calls relatively fast, and I was, I mean, in this case, actually, I, I wasn't making a read on that. I don't, I don't really know what it meant. Um, turns the ace of clubs, bringing three clubs. So now <clears throat> uh, I have about one. So there's like 270 in the pot. I'm like 270 in stacks, basically uh, SPR one. Um, 
I don't think I bet this turn with much of anything, so I decided to check. Maybe I do, maybe I have some small bets to, to bet turn, get all in, and if he has ace-ace, he has ace-ace, but I still want to value bet my king-king, which is a big part of what I'm repping. Um, could be slightly problematic that I didn't three bet at my stack depth because of some king-king with three bet, but I still have like king-seven, ace-seven for sure. Um, I check, he checks, and didn't read anything into his check. So uh, River is a nine. So I was trying to decide if I want to bluff River if he checked back, but when I hit the nine, I was just like, yeah, I think blocking another full house, I go for it. He has some seven X, he has some King X, he has some Ace King. Um, when I check raise flop and then turns the Ace of Clubs, like what air do I have left? So I think if he doesn't have a big hand, if he's not trapping, then, uh, then I think he's gonna fold. The problem with that is that if he has a hand like ace set, so I was thinking if he has ace ace, he, he unblocks sevens and he wants to start getting money in now. So, um, so I thought he would bet turn, but at SPR one that might be a bad assumption. Um, also, that he might fold it sometimes pre. Um, anyways, uh, I thought he had a lot of like king x with clubs, and I, I think that folds honestly. So. <clears throat> yeah, I shove. Um, I don't know if I like it or not. He uh, he has ace ace king. He calls, um, and so I I bust the tournament on a on a pretty big bluff that looks kind of punty because I check raise flop with nothing, uh, no pair, no draw. Um, as I talk it through, I'm fine with the flop play. I didn't think he was that strong, so it's already like kind of okay, and that makes it fine. Um, I was sort of right. Uh, he, he had ace, ace, king, which is, you know, strong enough to call, but not that, that, that strong. And then the turn play standard, the river play, problem is he checks back ace, seven, he checks back king, seven, but I don't know, he's just, like, gonna fold seven x, I think, he's gonna fold king x and ace x and ace king, probably, I think, maybe not ace king, but probably, king x of clubs, I think he's just gonna fold enough, um, so yeah, I, I'm not, like, it's not fun to go out on a, you know, stone bluff where you're drawing dead, but I think that, I think I, I'm fine with it. So I'm out of the tournament. It's uh 10 20. Hopefully I can get some rest. So there's a 10 K stud tomorrow. I probably won't play. I mean, it was today, but I could lay rest tomorrow. I probably won't play that. If I get amazing sleep, maybe I will, but otherwise I really need to catch up on rest because uh, my last night's sleep was so bad. Um, you know, bummed that I'm out of the tournament, uh, but it's fine. Uh, uh, Second-guessing myself a little bit in the, in the way that I went out, just because they're, you know, whatever. Uh, love to still be playing, but I'm not, and uh, sometimes that happens. All right, I'm back home, unwinding. Um, I keep going back and forth about this hand, and obviously I haven't let it go. Uh, yet. And on the one hand, I'm thinking, like, what does he do with king, queen, jack? Does he bet turn or check turn? What does he do with king xx with clubs? Does he bet turn or check turn? Because, I mean, those are really the keys to it. I don't think he bets king, queen, jack on the turn. I don't think he starts bluffing, but I do think maybe king, queen, jack with clubs, he bets small to try to show down. He might make some showdown bets on the turn. Um, I think I've decided that I slightly don't like it. But the point that I wanted to share with you is that when we, when we make mistakes or we make, we make plays that we think might be mistakes, it's really important to remind yourself that, um, I'll, I'll just use this hand as an example. So let's say I, I shove the river for like 95% pot. So he needs to fold half the time to make it a good bluff. <clears throat> and if... He folds more than half the time, it's a great bluff. If, if he folds less than half the time, it's not a good bluff. Um, but let's say, hypothetically, that I'm just wrong about, I, like, it was a bad play, and he actually only folds 25% of the time, um, which is, like, really, that, that makes it a very clearly bad play. Even in that case, risking 270K to win 270K, 75% of the time I'm out, a quarter of the time I'm going to double up. Uh, sorry, triple up. 
no, 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 double up <laughs> to uh, 5.40. So I have 5.40 a quarter of the time, and then three quarters of the time I have zero. Um, a quarter of 5.40 is, what is that? 1.35. So I really only lost half my stack on that river bluff. So for my 270K river bluff, I lose half my stack. And that's like a really bad case scenario where he's only calling uh, or he's only fooling 25% of the time. In any more realistic scenario where let's say it's 40% um, or 35%, um, now, you know, I'm losing a third of my stack, a quarter of my stack on the bluff in EV. So yeah, a lot of times you look at the result of the hand and you think, well, I lost my full stack um, that time. And if you decide it's a mistake, you're like, wow, well, I punted off my entire stack on a mistake. Um, but the reality is you, you punted off, even if it is a mistake, a portion of your stack because he's not calling 100% of the time there. Uh, he doesn't play a, his range in a way that he's never folding there, uh, I'm pretty sure. Or at least the average of all opponents that uh, would have given me the information that I had at that time uh, of him. Uh, so all in all, don't beat yourself up too much. Um, I'm, I'm still going to question the play because I want to find the right answer. And um, I don't know. It's kind of how my mind works. I think a lot of people are like this, but where when something is kind of wrong, you just keep thinking about it until you figure it out. Um, but in some cases, you can't always figure it out. And then you're just uh, you're just driving yourself crazy. So I'm going to unwind now. Um, in, in the last, like, Basically, since I became a father, I stopped watching TV. I used to watch TV all the time, but um, that's probably what I'm going to do now for an hour or two uh, to unwind and uh, kind of de-stress and then uh, hopefully go to bed and get some good sleep and maybe be back at it tomorrow. Maybe not. Maybe I'll just take the weekend off and be back at it Monday. <laughs>